Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out. And in the video today, if you've ever wondered why seaweed is sometimes used in the making of ice cream, well, want to know more. While seaweed didn't exactly come into play during those make-your-own ice cream science experiments you probably did in elementary school, it is sometimes used in the making of commercial ice cream, specifically used as a type of thickening agent. Technically, the substance used to thicken the ice cream is called agar or agar agar. The name comes from the Japanese word for red algae. The story goes that it was discovered in 1658 by Minora Tarazemon, a Japanese innkeeper who supposedly left extra seaweed soup outside overnight. It was Winter, then the substance froze. Tarazemon noticed in the morning that it had turned into a sort of gel when it thawed out again. Whether that's exactly how it was really discovered or not, it was later found that after first boiling seaweed, repeated thawing and freezing makes a pure gelatinous substance perfect to use as a thickening agent. It's likely that the process was picked up by the Dutch in the 17th century and later spread to other East Indies ports. Today, agar is used in a variety of processed foods as an emulsifier or binding agent. Not every country or company uses it. Some use carrageenans instead, which are made from certain red seaweeds. The use of different substances is based purely on preference and the availability of resources. For instance, during World War II, the availability of agar was low, so many companies switched to using carrageenans instead and stuck with it, even after agar became more widely available again. A similar thing actually happens with Twinkies, where during World War II, bananas were in short supply, so hostess switched to using a vanilla cream filling rather than banana cream. The vanilla cream cream filling turned out to be much more popular, so they never switched back to banana cream filling, though kept the banana-like look of the Twinkie anyway. But now you might be wondering, well, you make homemade ice cream with just milk, sugar, and a bag of ice and salt, so why is a binding agent needed in the production of commercial ice cream? The basic components of ice cream are fat, usually from milk, sweeteners, air, ice crystals, and other solids. This includes non-fat milk solids and various flavors, including things like bits of cookie. When the ice cream liquid is prepared, often an emulsifier and stabilizer must be added to keep all of the ingredients together and improve the texture. That's where where the seaweed potentially comes into play. Most commercial stabilizers these days use vegetable gums. That means agar, carrageenan, or some other xanthan gum. Interestingly, that's derived from bacteria that are found in cabbage. These stabilizers keep ice crystal growth small by immobilizing the liquid in the ice cream, sort of by acting like a sponge. Larger ice crystals caused by too much liquid in the ice cream will make the ice cream feel grainy if a stabilizer is not used. The stabilizers also help keep the ice cream from melting too quickly so that you can enjoy your ice cream for a longer amount of time on a hot day. That said, more stabilizers does not equal higher quality ice cream. High quality ice cream typically contains more fat and less air, while lower quality versions substitute a higher quantity of stabilizers for fat. They also typically contain more air molecules. And now for some bonus facts. Agar and other plant-based thickeners are a perfect substitute for the better-known gelatin. This is particularly true if you're a vegetarian looking for a non-animal-based thickening agent. For those of you who might not know, gelatin is made by extracting the collagen from an animal's bones. And now for another bonus fact. Other items containing agar or carrageenans include salad dressing and jelly. It can even be found in some beers. You could even find it in your toothpaste. Further, you might find carrageenan, kelp, or simply algae extract listed on some of your favorite beauty products, usually present as a thickening agent in lotions and creams. Its supposed ability to temporarily tighten skin also makes it a popular component of anti-wrinkle and eye creams. If you're thinking that you can save money though by using ice cream instead of anti-wrinkle cream on your face, don't, because, well, ice cream definitely attracts flies. And now for another bonus fact. If you've ever had braces, you might have tasted a type of seaweed powder. That yucky, almost doughy-tasting gook they put in metal trays to make impressions of your teeth is often made with alginate powder, which is derived from seaweed. And now another bonus fact. In microbiology, agar provides a solid surface to aid in the growth of fungi and bacteria. The gel won't be destroyed because many microorganisms can digest agar. The method was first used by a laboratory assistant of Robert Koch, who saw his wife using agar to make confectionery in the kitchen. Koch believed that agar had potential in the laboratory and ended up using agar to make the first culture of tuberculosis bacillus. Agar also allows for seeding germination in petri dishes, provided the seeds have been sterilized. 
So, I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, I'd like to take this moment to thank our patrons on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting us with a small and totally voluntary financial contribution, please do consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash today I found out. Loads of great perks signed up for people who support us, so it's not a one way street. You do get something great in return. Again, that's patreon.com forward slash today I found out to help us out. And as always, Thank you for watching.